I like the freedom that the students are given to focus their education towards the directions they want it to be. Um, I also like the fact that from what I've heard of students who attend democratic schools, they're all happy. Um, I think in a lot of cases with students in England, if you ask a student, do they enjoy school, they will say, I enjoy seeing my friends or I enjoy this lesson. Students from democratic schools say, I enjoy all of school. I love democratic schools. I went to a state school before I came to Sands and hated it. I hated everything about it. I hated the strictness of it. I think people should be equal and I think opinions of every people is, has just the same values and I don't think that you could say that like some people do, uh, adults have maybe more experience you could, they say and they have to enforce this experience on kids but I think that it should be the other way in a way that kids should ask for adults experience if they feel like they need it. Otherwise it is like saying in a way that the, that the fall is more important than the spring. It just doesn't make sense to me. Im Mittelpunkt steht das Vertrauen der Schule in jeden Schüler, die Fähigkeit zu haben, sich selbst zu bilden. Lessons are totally not mandatory. Uh, the other basic word to describe our school is non-coercive, and I think that that is completely essential. We could not be the school we are now if students had to go to classes or if they had to learn a particular thing. They have to be, there has to be a true free choice to be learning something or thinking about something else or out in the woods or playing in the creek or sitting and playing with a friend. There has to be a true choice all the time. We help them to recognize what they want and to organize their time. Uh, but they can learn in different ways. Uh, they can learn by themselves, uh, exploring books and, and games and other resources. And they can learn from other people. So we help them to find those people who might have this, this kind of interest that they, they are. So. Well, I see democratic education as um, a means of achieving something more important, which is um, intrinsically motivated education. I think the important thing, the most important thing, is that students follow their own inner guidance in determining how they're going to learn and what they're going to learn. And that democracy is just the best framework that, that we can come up with to guarantee this sort of an environment. I would invite uh, politicians to learn from us how to make democracy. If they will do countries run like our schools, we will have, we probably have peace in the world. Is it that Ghana or that Guinea you should head to? Ghana. That's what it is. People who go to schools like Summerhill learn to be responsible for their actions. They learn to think about the welfare of the group rather than the individual. They learn to think about the rights and feelings of other people. So they learn compassion. It's very difficult to define democratic education because it differs so much between one school and another. But the thing that I found all over the world 
is respect, mutual respect between adults and children. I think that if we want our students to be um, socially conscious, to care for others, to be global citizens, we have to have an education that empowers them, that is relevant to them and for their lives. And that's where I see that democratic education is um, important. Uh, and in the U.S., I think it's happening worldwide, uh, which I'm so happy to be a part of IDEC, we see common themes. Uh, the souls of children are being wounded, crushed, in the traditional systems. And democratic education, I think, is attempting to heal uh, children and to save them as well. Præcis kl. 12 byder spillemasteren velkommen. Aha. Øh, og, minder om, og minder om, at spillet begynder, hvor det sluttede sidst. Undskyld, så er det præcist eller præcis? Præcis. Okay. Before I got the job at Sands, I taught for a year in a state school in the UK, which was a horrible experience for me. It's not something I enjoyed at all because I wasn't able to teach. What I can do now is is teach. I can I can share knowledge and share information and pass on my experiences. In the state school, the majority of my job was crowd control and and actually babysitting a lot of the time. It was extremely frustrating. <laughs> The tremendous advantage of this freedom to attend or not to attend is that disciplinary problems in the classroom, which are such a monster in many, many conventional schools, don't exist because if someone doesn't want to be there, they aren't there. And the people who want to be there are there and they want to learn. Learning is like discovering new things. It's just, it's an adventure. <laughs> Så kigger du herover. Hvor var det, du havde udsangsordene? Det var de her. Her har du fået alle udsangsordene i de her sætninger. Okay? Det er fanger, høre, I think it creates a learning culture, uh, which is lacking in, in the UK. Um, there's almost an anti-intellectual culture in, in many schools, in, in certainly in my previous experience. And I think the freedom to choose what you learn and when you learn it um, teaches you the value of knowledge and the value of education. Because you don't have to go to the lessons, people mostly want to because they can and they don't have to. So you just learn what you want to learn. And if you don't want to learn it, you won't. Conventional schools are based on the principle that children don't want to learn. So they say, you've got to come and you've got to do this and you've got to do that and you've got to do the other. If you start from the assumption that children want to learn, then your whole approach is completely different. And children do want to learn. I know what I want to say. I want to learn 
Ja. Und es interessiert mich einfach auch viel. Wenn ich irgendwie beim Gespräch was höre, dann will ich was drüber wissen. So, ich weiß nicht. Ich finde, das ist ein gutes Gefühl, wenn man was, wenn man was weiß. Ja. Um, knowledge at Summerhill is conveyed in a variety of different ways. We have conventional timetable, conventional lessons. We have teachers who, who, who prepare children for exams, exam courses. Uh, but we also have a lot, of, a lot of other learning that goes on that's just through living and being and, and discovering from other people and discovering for yourself. And so the learning has a kind of formal area and then it has a very, very big informal area as well. One of the main things you learn at Sons is not academic, it's about your social learning and your ability to talk to people and understand people. Going to the village school has taught me how to learn and how how to know what it is that I need to learn and I don't I don't learn things because I feel like I should, because I feel like I should have this reading level or be it this level in math, it's because it interests me or because I need to know or because it's important to me to know this. And um, I need to be able to learn at my own pace and sometimes that's faster and sometimes it's slower than other people and that's, if I don't have that then I don't, I don't do the work like I want it to be done and I'm, I'm a perfectionist. so. If I don't have a lot of freedom to do things the way that I want to, then I'm just never satisfied. Hm. <laughs> 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 Det skulle have været godt nok. Hey, så pink på. Den hår Ja. Og så. Og så. Ja. We expect that adults uh, mostly educate themselves, but for some reason we think that uh, children are incapable of doing this. And um, if you think about it in terms of the, the sorts of things that, um, that a baby learns, but before the time that they begin school, um, we would think of those results as, as miraculous if a school were able to teach someone who uh, had never encountered language before to talk. Um, you know, but they learn by themselves. Uh, they learn to walk, they learn to talk, they learn to make sense of the world, and nobody needs to teach them these things. 
And somehow, when they turn five years old or six years old, we suddenly think that they forget how to teach themselves and that somehow they would never be able to learn anything if the adults didn't somehow package it for them. Well, of course, it's the, the basic skills are acquired differently uh, for each individual child. Um, some children learn to read by being read to and following along and uh, eventually mapping the story onto the words. Um, a lot of children learn uh, to read by playing video games, that in order to play the games they want to play, they need to be able to understand the words on the screen. And because they really want to learn it, um, they're able to do that. As far as calculating goes, um, one of the things that's very important to children, and I guess people in general, is that they like to buy things. And they have a certain amount of money and a certain number of things that they want to buy, and they need to figure out how to buy the things they want to buy with the amount of money that they have. And um, they don't even realize often that they're learning to add and subtract. But, uh, but they do. They know that if they want to buy a, a drink that costs a, a certain amount of money and uh, some candy that costs a certain amount of money, that they're going to have to, uh, to make choices. And uh, they, they learn to figure that out very quickly. Um, society makes many demands on young people. And there is an acceptance that you need to have exam passes, for instance, in order to uh, achieve in life. And, and there is an acceptance outside Summerhill or in, in general education that if you don't achieve those things, if you don't have those standards, then you're going to be a failure. But of course, we actually know that's rubbish. I mean, everybody really knows it's rubbish because you can't, exams can't make you a happy person. They can't make you a strong person. They can't make you enjoy your life. Um, and they can't actually make you rich either if that's what you want to be. So. Um, so, although outside, um, people may feel that that would be a requirement, um, in Summerhill, the kids are very realistic, you know, they don't, they don't really follow that pattern. They don't really think that if you get exams, you're going to be happy and live long and have a wonderful life. Um, but they do choose exams that are going to take them in the direction they want to go. So, obviously, if a child wants to become a doctor, he's got to be realistic or she's got to be realistic and, and understand that you have to take a pattern of examinations before you can become a doctor. Um, so I think realism is important. I think being realistic and, and setting your aims and setting your targets and knowing where you're going and giving children information to know those things are really important. Um, but this is kind of myth that if you just pass all your exams, everything's going to be wonderful. We don't subscribe to that really. Nur das, was der Mensch selbst für sinnvoll hält, das, was ihn neugierig macht, wird er langfristig behalten. Von außen initiierte Lernprozesse erreichen allenfalls das Kurzzeitgedächtnis, wie wir alle wissen. Bei Klausuren behält man schon ein paar Sachen, wenn man die ein paar Wochen vorher gelernt hat, aber zwei, drei Monate später ist es schon wieder verloren. Das Gehirn ist in erster Linie ein Filterorgan, nicht so sehr ein Speicherorgan. Es kann auch speichern, aber in erster Linie schützt es uns vor der Überflutung an Informationen und lässt, wie der Philosoph Sloterdijk mal gesagt hat, nur willkommene Neuerfahrungen hinein.
Und das, was eine willkommene Neuerfahrung ist, das kann der Mensch immer nur selbst in seinem Inneren bestimmen. Und wenn er Zugang dazu hat, dann sind Lernprozesse leicht, machen Spaß und sind nachhaltig erfolgreich. Und wenn er keinen Zugang dazu hat, funktionieren sie nicht. Well, the school meeting is really responsible for um, all of the day-to-day -day operation of the school. Um, all of the rules of the school are made by the school meeting. Um, the way that those rules are uh, enforced, the decisions of the judicial committee, are reviewed by the school meeting. Uh, the budget for the school uh, is drawn up by the school meeting. And the staff each year um, are elected and, and are hired by the school meeting. Well, in the school meeting, we elect a chair every term, so he or she chairs the meeting. And we have an agenda that's up in the corridor, so people can just write whatever they want on the agenda, and then we bring it up and we discuss it, and then we vote on it if it's a voting point. And each one has one vote, and, you know, since there's more students and staff, that means that mostly the, the students really get to decide. We find it useful to discuss and agree on what the limits will be for individual behavior to guarantee the maximum freedom for everyone in the community and to keep people's activities from uh, interfering with uh, other people's activities. By meeting together and by discussing and by deciding um, what these frameworks will be, we're able to create an environment which allows uh, maximum freedom for the maximum number of people. We operate with a law book that's probably 50 pages long. We have more rules than almost any other school that I know of. Um, I think that's just the case when you have a situation where you have a rule of law uh, rather than a rule by individuals. Uh, in a traditional school, they may have a, a set of rules that the students are expected to follow, but then they also have individuals that can make decrees that uh, everyone has to follow and can make judgments as to uh, what's okay for someone to do and what's not okay for someone to do, and they can make those they can decide one thing one day, and if they want to, they can decide a different thing on another day. One of the things that makes Sudbury Valley work is that we have a rule of law and that the school meeting decides what the rules are going to be and those rules apply to every person at school every day. And the same laws uh, are applied to uh, staff members and, and to students. Yeah, I think all the rules are necessary because they just give a boundary to what you can do because there always has to be a boundary otherwise people go completely wild. But I think the rules and sounds work. I think they're good rules. We make laws about everything. We, we have about 200 laws. We have a lot of laws. And a lot of them are very, you would consider petty if you came, you know, they would be a law that was made because somebody was riding somebody else's bicycle. And there are a lot of exceptions to laws and there are, there are laws and then there are other laws that are connected to them and there are automatic fines. There's a lot, a lot of stuff, but you know, it's, it's kind of like housekeeping. It's like, it's like your family and things just build up and build up and then every now and again we have a clean out and throw lots of laws out. And um, it seems to work well for us. Every rule was enacted by the school meeting and every rule can be changed by the school meeting. Um, and rules are, uh, are continually modified. Um, for example, uh, we had a rule for many years that um, hot beverages like coffee and tea um, could only be 
consumed at the kitchen. Um, this was to, to prevent uh, in accidents where uh, you know, hot liquids were spilled on people and people were injured by that. Um, it was uh, an unpopular rule because, of course, people like to take their coffee or their tea to wherever it is that they're going, and uh, sometimes the kitchen is inconvenient. Uh, and so the school meeting debated for, uh, for quite a while and on, on many different occasions uh, ways that this rule could be modified. This is Tobias H. that wants to be able to get some school with it. Are there any comments? Yes. I think he's really good and when it comes to the young, really young children and school democracy, I would say it, it, not everything interests them. But when they, they are interested, they are very, very good at, at pronouncing what they feel and think. The younger students really do make a good contribution to the school. Some of them don't get it for the first year and they just don't understand what democracy means. But some of them are brilliant and they're just always bringing up points in the meeting and voting on stuff and really getting into the democratic system. It's really cool. If someone breaks a rule, then um, at first you try to solve it. Uh, just by asking what happened and what did you do and if it's small um, you can just talk it over and warn somebody that it's a rule. And they probably say, oh I didn't know, sorry. But if it's bigger or it happened before, then uh, you can bring it up and uh, you write it on a, a form. That and that person did this and this at that time and he broke this rule. You sign it and then it goes to the juridical commission. And there it's evaluated. Everybody who was involved and witnesses, they all come there and they tell their story. Then is the question, what does this need? to be solved. Why is the rule broken? What was the need of the one who broke it? Why did he break it? Maybe the rule is outdated. So they tried to figure out the whole picture and uh, they have the, the right to um, uh, connect a consequence to the deed. We try to have logical consequences. We don't believe in punishment, but we want to solve the problem of that rule being broken. So if the person comes and says, I will never do it again, we say, okay, we trust them. If they do it again, then we have a record that they said they wouldn't, and then we might do something more, like say, for instance, well, you can't go in that room because you left it a mess, or you have broken something, you have to fix it. So we believe mainly in the logical consequence if the action continued, so we give small examples of that, and it usually deters people. And if it's a personal problem, if they keep breaking rules because they're upset, then we try to go and talk about the upset and we leave the broken rule question aside. When I first came to the conference, I found the idea of democratic education rather shocking. This is because in England, we don't have a very large number of democratic schools, and I, for one, had never heard of democratic education. I think the more I've been here and the more I've heard, the more I've realised that it's, the ideas themselves are sound and logical and obvious, and that the shock only comes from comparing them to the system we already have. And I think... Um, I think the ideas are good and I think that definitely in England we could benefit from adopting some of the philosophies of democratic education.
Thank you.